It's been almost two years since I went to North Carolina and bought this airplane. To those of you who've seen that video, you've watched me take off and land this airplane for the very first time. And now, almost two years later, I still cannot properly land this airplane. Now, to be fair, that is only half true. You see, after I brought the airplane home, I spent countless hours learning how to fly and more specifically land this airplane. As you guys might know or remember, these types of airplanes, pit specials, they're not easy to land by any means. They're quite difficult. However, I like to think that over time, I became, uh, what's the word? Confident, content, comfortable, proficient with my landings. But to stay proficient, you have to be flying all the time. I think you should be going up about once a week or so. Generally speaking, I like to take some time off from flying during the winter. The weather's not all that great and the sun sets a lot earlier, so I can't go flying after work like I normally do. And so I like to use this downtime to just get some maintenance done on the airplane and then just mentally regroup. However, this season, with all the crazy stuff that happened this year revolving around COVID and, and work and, and all that, I just didn't go flying all that often. I think it's actually been about two months, maybe a little more than two months since I last flew the plane and with these airplanes it's not like just hopping right back onto a bicycle i know that the muscle memory is going to be there but it's not going to be the same and so i thought it would be fun to show you guys the nitty gritty dirty and ugly of my progression of basically relearning how to land this airplane all right so here we go i've now put you guys on my head so that you can see exactly what i see we also got a camera on the wing to hopefully get some cool shots i was supposed to have in cockpit audio but for some reason that wasn't working for this part of the flight so you'll just have to put up with this voiceover you can just imagine that my voice has a cool scratchy radio fighter pilot type filter on it because trust me that's what it sounded like in real life clear prop As I was saying, the GoPro is sitting on top of my head, so you actually see more than I do when I'm flying. It's literally only several inches higher than my eyes, but that's a big deal in terms of perspective. So although not exact, this does give you a pretty good idea of what the sight picture looks like. Anyways, at this point, I was just about ready to take off, so I called the tower, and that conversation went something like this. Hey there, tower. Red and white rocket here. Request permission for takeoff. Red and white rocket, may there, tower. Permission granted. By pilot's discretion, you are clear to the moon, Godspeed, and God bless. Alrighty, thanks babe. And that was basically word for word. And with that folks, I was out of there and on my way to the destination airport. I wanted to go to an uncontrolled airport as that would give me a bit more flexibility in terms of flying a really tight pattern. Overall, I was feeling pretty good, but I guess my GoPro wasn't because it slowly hung its head in shame until eventually it was just filming the ground for the entire rest of this flight. Luckily though, Liz, Daniel, and even Vesta had agreed to go to the airport and help film me from the ground, so hopefully we get some sweet footage. Now, because this was my first time flying in a long time, the plan was to take it easy and not force anything. If something didn't look good, I'd simply go around. So on that note, my first landing wasn't even going to be a real landing, but more of a low approach. This would help me get used to the sight picture of this particular airport and make sure that I could still fly coordinated straight down the runway. Now I actually planned to do this at least several times until eventually I got low enough where my wheels would touch the runway. I used to do this all the time and I found that it really helps calibrate my own altitude judgment. So as I lined up with the runway for the second time, that was the plan right up until this happened. Although not perfect, this landing completely blew me away with how smooth it was. With so much time off, I really did expect a rougher first landing. Now I knew that it was probably just beginner's luck more than anything else, but I simply couldn't let this opportunity pass by, so I brought it to a full stop. All right, so we're down here on the ground. Look who it is, look at the cat dragged in, or I guess, look at the dog. Yes, what's up, what's up, what's up? 
All right, so a couple technical difficulties. This is obviously our first time filming with people on the ground trying to get the side shots. What happened here? Okay, really tighten that thing. Hopefully that does the trick. We'll see. And then Daniel, what's with your camera? Oh yeah, so Ben's plane is so small and it's going so fast compared to like all the like Cessnas and everything that the camera is just having such a hard time focusing on the plane. And so it's been at, in and out of focus just constantly. All right, so we apologize. It's our first time we're figuring it out. Figuring it out. One day we'll be a professional, you know, media Team. house. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so initially when I was planning this video, I was gonna have a little friendly wager, a little bet with Daniel. No money though, because we're broke. No money, because we can't afford it. I was gonna bet that I could grease the landings three times within 10 landings. So I can do 10 landings and three of those have to be greasers. However, judging by my second landing, it was pretty good. I would say it's right on the verge of being a greaser. I think I'm gonna have to bring that number down. To be honest, I'm pretty sure that was just beginner's luck. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that every time, but I'll say, seven landings i get seven landings and i have to grease three of them a greaser will call it just the main wheels have to touch down you have to hear the chirps and no bouncing on the main wheels the tail wheel could bounce because it's small and no suspension at all so it could bounce a lot but the main wheels have to not bounce all right daniel what do you think to be honest folks i think there's gonna have to be a part two it ain't happening today i'm calling it right now <laughs> all right all right all right i guess it's the only opinion that matters vesta what do you think Give me oh, come on. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're gonna see who is right. It's one out of the three of us. Hopefully not <laughs> yeah, hopefully not best. That would suck. <laughs> All right, so hopefully we kind of worked out all the kinks, the GoPro, I remounted it, retightened it. I think my audio should be recording. We'll see if it's scratchy or if it's bearable or if I can use it or not. Daniel's gonna try to figure out the camera. I don't really know how to use it that much because it's pretty new. And we'll see, hopefully my landings work out. Hopefully I do win this bet. There's no money on the line, but hey, it's a pride thing, you know, it's all a pride thing. Gotta do these S turns, make sure I don't run into anything or anyone or anybody. I do really think that that second approach landing was just completely luck because it was really smooth and I've never ever ever I've never had my landings be that smooth that fast so um, we'll see how it goes I'm definitely happy with it but I don't expect it every time control check alrighty Franklin traffic, pit 678 Sierra is taking off runway 27, left close traffic, Franklin. Here we go, we're lined up, this is what it looks like, this is the side picture, let's go. And so with that, the challenge began. Seven landings, three greasers. I mean, come on, how hard could it be? Franklin traffic, pit six, seven, eight, zero, left base to final, runway one eight, Franklin. Even though my initial landing was almost perfect, I couldn't help but feel that that was just a fluke. So this next landing would be absolutely crucial in setting the tone of my flying for the rest of the day. It was good, but far from perfect. I was able to keep the airplane in a controlled three-point attitude and come to a safe touchdown, but this landing confirmed what deep down I already knew. That does confirm my suspicion that the first landing that I did was just kind of beginner's luck. But hey, we'll see, now I know where I'm working up from and where I have to get to, so let's keep at it. That was landing number, that was landing number one. Franklin traffic, pit six, seven, eight, zero is left base to final for runway one eight, Franklin. So there's the runway. It's really hard to see, but you gotta look over your wing and then under the wing. All right, there we go. Our airspeed's looking pretty good, actually. There's the runway. Oh. Okay, not clean, not clean, not clean, but I'll take it for number two. So 
So that was the second landing. And I think first one was better than that one. So that's that. Put six, seven, eight, two, left your final one way. One eight, Franklin. Gonna put a little bit of a slip in here. We're a little high. There we go. Get us back on. Oh, I'm not aligned at all, but this this is gonna work out. No problem. There we go. This was now my third landing and I still didn't manage to get in a single greaser. Whatever I was doing clearly wasn't working. It was time to change things up. I'll give myself a little bit more space. I think I'm coming in a little bit too hot and too fast. Extending the downwind would give me a longer approach, meaning that I would have more time to adjust my descent rate and line up with the runway. However, if I extend the downwind too long, I'll end up in a situation where I can't see the runway for a prolonged period of time and the landings actually become more difficult. So good timing is critical. That one started off so good and then just had to get bouncy. Yeah, that landing started out so good and then just quickly became a little bouncy, which is unfortunate. I greased the left tire. I didn't land perfectly with two wheels on the, on the runway at the same time. But I can't ask for perfection taking that much time off. Franklin traffic, pit 678 Sierra, left base to final runway 18, Franklin. A little bit of a slip. All right, that should be good. Ooh, birds, okay. There we go. Oh. Oh, going around, going around, going around. That most definitely was not a greaser. He bounced and then he got out of there. All right, so that one, I unintentionally did a wheel landing, and it got a little bit squirrely on me, so I just got out of there. To those of you keeping track of my landings, you'd know that that was landing number five. And if you do some simple math, you'd quickly come to realize that technically, I've already lost the challenge. None of those landings were solid greasers, and the goal was to get three out of seven total landings. However, as you can tell, I obviously need the practice. In fact, my brother put it like this. It looks like he's struggling kind of hard. Six, seven, eight, zero, left base to final runway one eight, Franklin. And so I decided to keep at it for a little while longer. Our airspeed is perfect on this one. Let's kind of keep this turn going. Okay, we're perfectly lined up. All right, this should work out. Come on. <laughs> Dang, I thought I had that landing, but it turned out that I was just a little bit too high when I really committed to the flare. So that was number six. This would be the final landing, but obviously we're not going to do it. Franklin traffic, put 678 Sierra is on left base to final for runway 27. Or sorry, 18, Franklin. A little bit of a float. Just pull the stick, pull the stick, pull the stick. Ah! Oh my gosh. I cannot grease it. Well, this would be the final landing. Um, I believe this is landing number seven. And. Uh, 
Or that was landing number seven. Never mind. That was landing number seven. Well, that was landing number seven, I believe, if, I, if my counting's not off. And I did not grease it, so I think I'll keep going till about ten, maybe a little bit more than ten landings. And uh, we're going to call it a day. I don't think I'll be able to grease it three times in a row today, honestly, but we'll see. I can't say that I expected me to do much better than that, to be completely honest. I have to be happy with what I got, because things could be a lot worse, to be completely honest. Not to get all moody on you guys, but it's just the truth. Alright, we're a little fast, gonna slow down, and maybe this is gonna work out. A little bit of a power. Alright, here we go. Franklin traffic, 5678 Sierra is left, crosswind to downwind, runway 18, left close traffic, Franklin. Alright, that was landing number 8, I think I'll do two more landings, I don't want to get overly fatigued or push my luck, so I think we'll do two more landings and probably call it a day. Perhaps I really did push my luck, or maybe it was fatigue, or maybe it was just my unwillingness to take the loss and admit defeat, so instead I kept at it trying to force something to happen. Whatever the case, this next landing stuck out from the rest, and not in a good way. That's what we call the nitty gritty and ugly folks. I think what happened there is I was coming down a little bit too fast and I completely misjudged my altitude and so I hit the ground a little hard. Luckily I had full power got out of there right away. Knowing when to stop. This is something that every pilot must learn to do, especially a pits pilot. These little airplanes require 100% focus for every single landing and that uses up a lot of energy very quickly. You might not even notice it until you climb out of the airplane and realize that you're absolutely exhausted. So practicing too long could actually be detrimental. I've heard it said multiple times that you'll never master a pits, so don't push your luck landing it more than you have to. Now as much as my ego wouldn't want to agree, I took that as a fair warning and brought it in for a full stop. Oof, floated again. Got scared of the ground. I think that was the best one. And I think we're going to call it, boys. All right, guys, what can I say? That was a complete and utter disaster. Failure. I mean, I guess, actually, one of us succeeded. Daniel was actually right, right? Yeah, it's always a safe bet to bet against him. Always a safe bet to bet against me, huh? We will change that. I guess we do have to make a part two to this video. We'll come back here. I think what I'll do is I'll take some time off and not off from flying, but I'll take some time off from Maybe filming. Maybe another three months. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, no, we're not going to take that much time off, but I'll take some time off to just practice by myself because like this, I'm wearing a big GoPro on my head. It's not something that I'm used to at all. And when I feel like I'm back to being proficient, we'll come back out here and we're going to make a part two. This is the first time we've ever made a production anything like this with cameras on the ground and me talking and whatever organizing all this but what we'll do is we'll work out all the kinks i don't even know how it's going to come out i don't know what footage they got we'll see i figured before we achieve perfection because it is inevitable but before we get there we might as well produce some content to keep you guys entertained and keep you guys following along to be honest i'm a little bit disappointed but then also i can't say that i'm surprised at all when i first came up with this challenge i knew that it's going to be very difficult for me to come off this really long extended break and then get three greasers done in 10 landings but i I think I played it safe. All of the landings I could have walked away from, there was that one hard bounce and uh, I gunned the throttle and got out of there. But every other landing I could have made work to a complete full stop if I wanted to. So I can be happy in that at least. Wait, Daniel, what were you saying? Okay guys, I'm sick and tired of these piss guys just complaining all day long. Oh, how hard it's to land my plane. It's so squirrely or whatever. I might have to hop in there myself and land it. And I'm not even a pilot. <laughs> Anyways, I think we're going to call it a day here. There's no point in pushing my luck and going out and doing more landings just because you get very fatigued landing these kind of airplanes. And I don't want to, like I said, push my luck and have something bad happen. We're all tired. Liz is over there sitting down. If you guys want her to... <laughs> 
as, as awkward as heck. If you want her to stand up, not literally, but stand up to the bullies that bully her, uh, comment down in the comments. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's going to be the video. I'm going to end it here. If you're still watching this, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. But don't go away. Stay tuned just a little bit longer. We're going to end this video with a little spice. A little just spice on top of this cake. You know what I mean? So stick around. Now that I hear myself and what I just said, because they're making fun of me. Spice doesn't really go on top of cakes, I guess. Not eating that meal. A little spice on top of the steak. Ah. <laughs> ah. I saw you looking for the side door. Bad landings may be fun to look at for the casual observer, but for the pilot, it's another story. I think about my landings long after they've happened, and I think this is true for a lot of pilots. While this is good in that it forces you to analyze your flying and correct your mistakes, it can also take the fun out of flying if you're having a really bad day. And so to end the day on a positive note, I decided to do one last approach, a quick flyby for the road. 